Hi, this is Pam Johnson, and uh, I'd like to present my second Resident Pearl presentation, which addresses the question, when do I need a non-contrast CT? In the old days, patients were scanned often with non-contrast, venous phase, and delayed phase. Just r everyone routinely imaged. Now we really have to tailor our protocols. We're concerned about radiation exposure, and we have to think carefully about when we're going to include specific acquisitions, and it has to be indicated by the clinical question being asked. So, when do I need a non-contrast CT? The answer, not often. It is no longer indicated for hepatic and pancreatic CT. And let's talk about when we do need a non-contrast CT. So, the indications include a patient who comes into the ER with acute chest pain, and you're concerned about an aortic dissection or aortic pathology. This is specifically to identify an intramural hematoma, and I'll show you a nice example in a minute. Second indication, patients who are being imaged following endoluminal stent placement require a non-contrast CT. I will show you examples why. This is part of that protocol as well. The adrenal protocol includes a non-contrast CT. The renal protocol in patients with hematuria or who have a potential mass that's being characterized require a non-contrast CT. And as we all know, the renal stone protocol is simply a non-contrast CT. So patient with acute chest pain in the ER, we typically perform a gated arterial phase if we're concerned about ascending aortic pathology. And you really should perform a pre-contrast scan to identify intramural hematoma. An intramural hematoma is is a form of pathology that has similar clinical implications as a dissection. So if there's an intramural hematoma in the ascending thoracic aorta, that patient may require emergent surgery. This is something that you don't want to miss. If it's limited to the descending thoracic aorta, then it is initially treated like a type B dissection, depending on the configuration and the appearance and the patient's clinical presentation. So here's a nice example of a non-contrast CT showing an intramural hematoma. You see the high-density crescent along the wall, and as you can see, the Hounsfield units measurements is in the range of 70 Hounsfield units. Clearly, there's an intramural hematoma. Once you administer IV contrast, the density within the aortic lumen makes it very hard to determine whether that is intramural blood or just some plaque along the wall of the aorta. So, the non-contrast acquisition is essential. Here's another patient with an intramural hematoma. Just to show you the difference between the pre-contrast and the arterial phase, on the pre-contrast, we see the arrows in the ascending aorta showing the high-density crescent, but after you've given IV contrast, it looks very similar to just simple mural thrombus or some crescentic plaques. Remember, patients with acute chest pain in the ER, got to do a pre-contrast acquisition. Patients who have had aortic stent, endoluminal stent placement need a non-contrast study as part of their protocol. At Hopkins, we do a pre-contrast, an arterial phase, and a venous phase. The purpose of the pre-contrast scan is to demonstrate calcification or surgical material that on an arterial phase will look like an endoleak or even a pseudoaneurysm. So I'll show you a really nice example here of what we're looking for. You see, if you just had the arterial phase on the right, you might be concerned that that patient has an endoleak within the aneurysm sac. But comparing to the pre-contrast scan, we can see that this is just calcification. So really essential in these patients to distinguish endoleak from calcification or surgical material is the non-contrast phase. For the adrenal adenoma imaging, for a patient with an adrenal mass and you're trying to characterize whether it's an adenoma, we do a pre-contrast acquisition, the reason being that most adrenal adenomas are lipid rich and they will have a low attenuation, less than 10 on pre-contrast CT. If it's less than 10, we know it's an adenoma and we can stop imaging. This is a uh, the cutoff that I use based on a, a really good paper from the late 90s that showed high sensitivity and specificity when the Hounsfield units are 10 on the pre-contrast study. I, I'm confident that that's an adenoma. Some people will go a little bit higher with their cutoff, but this is the one that I use. And here's a really nice example of an adenoma measuring zero Hounsfield units. This is because of the presence of microscopic fat. If the Hounsfield units are higher and you're concerned that it or you're, you suspect that it may be a lipid poor adenoma, then we go on to perform the washout part of the ad adrenal pr protocol. Okay, so I hope that helps. The next topic that I will be presenting is what am I missing on a non-contrast CT? Thank you very much.